Hey everybody, welcome to Chris's Daily Read Aloud, Magic Treehouse Edition. Today we are reading Magic Treehouse book number 14, Day of the Dragon King, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapters 1 and 2. Prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. Eight-year-old Jack and his seven-year-old sister Annie climbed into the treehouse and they found it was filled with books. Jack and Annie soon discovered that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to the places in the books. All they had to do was point to a picture and wish to go there. Along the way, they discovered that the treehouse belongs to Morgan Le Fay. Morgan is a magical librarian from the time of King Arthur. She travels through time and space gathering books. In Magic Treehouse book number 12, Polar Bears Past Bedtime, Jack and Annie solved the last of four ancient riddles and became master librarians. To help them in their future tasks, Morgan gave Jack and Annie secret library cards with the letters ML on them. Jack and Annie's first four, first four missions as master librarians are to save stories from ancient libraries. <coughs> when their first adventure ended, when their first adventure ended, Magic Treehouse number 13, Vacation Under the Volcano, Morgan asked them to return to the treehouse in two weeks to go to China and save another story. Now, the two weeks are over. Day of the Dragon King. Chapter 1, The Bamboo Book. Annie peeked into Jack's room. Ready to go to China, she asked. Jack took a deep breath. Sure, he answered. Bring your secret library card, Annie said. I have mine in my pocket. Yep, said Jack. He opened his top dresser drawer and took out a thin wooden card. The letters ML on it shimmered in the light. Jack dropped the card into his backpack. Then he threw in his notebook and a pencil. Let's go, said Annie. Jack pulled on his pack and followed her. What are we in for today, he wondered. Oh, sorry. What are we in for today, he wondered. Bye, Mom, said Annie as she passed as they passed their mom in the kitchen. Where are you going, she asked. China, said Annie. Great, said their mom. She winked at them. Have fun. Fun, thought Jack. He was afraid that fun might not be quite the right word. Just wish us luck, he said as he and Annie headed out the door. Good luck, their mother called. If only she knew we weren't pretending, Jack whispered to Annie. Yeah, said Annie, grinning. Outside, the sun shone brightly. Birds sang, crickets chirped. Jack and Annie walked up their street toward the Frog Creek Woods. I wonder if the weather will be this nice in China, Annie said. I don't know. Remember, Morgan said this would be a very scary adventure, said Jack. They're always scary, said Annie. But we always meet animals who help us, or people. True, said Jack. I bet we meet someone great today, said Annie. Jack smiled. He was starting to feel excited now instead of scared. Let's hurry, he said. They ran into the Frog Creek Woods. They slipped between the tall trees until they came to a huge oak. Hello, came a soft voice they knew well. They looked up. Morgan was peering down from the magic treehouse. Ready for your next mission as master librarians, she asked. Yes, said Jack and Annie. They grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Are we still going to China, asked Annie, when they had climbed into the treehouse. Indeed, said Morgan, you're going to ancient China. Here's the title of the story you must find. She held up a long, thin strip of wood. It looked like a ruler, except it had strange writing on it instead of numbers. Long ago, the Chinese discovered how to make paper. It was one of the world's most important discoveries, said Morgan. But you're going to a time earlier than that, to a time when books were written on bamboo strips like this one. Wow, said Annie, pointing at the figures in the, on the bamboo. So this is Chinese writing? Yes, said Morgan. Just as we have letters, Chinese writing is made up of many characters. Each one stands for a different thing or idea. These characters are the title of an ancient Chinese legend. You must find the first writing of the legend before the Imperial Library is destroyed. Hurry, let's go, said Annie. Wait, we need our research book, said Jack. Yes, you do, said Morgan. From the folds of her robe, she pulled out a book. On the cover was the title, The Time of the First Emperor. Morgan handed the book to Jack. This is research book will guide you, she said. But remember, in your darkest hour, only the old legend can save you. But we have to find it first, said Annie. Exactly, said Morgan. She handed Jack the bamboo strip, and he slipped it into his pack. Jack pushed his glasses into place, then painted, pointed at the cover of their research book. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. And everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 2. The Cowherd. Oh, wow, said Annie. 
These clothes feel so soft, and look, I have a pocket for my secret library card. Jack opened his eyes. Their clothes had magically changed. They were no longer wore jeans and t-shirts and sneakers. Instead, they had on baggy pants, loose shirts, straw shoes, and round hats. Annie's shirt had a pocket in it. Jack saw that his backpack had become a rough cloth sack. Inside were his research book, his notebook, his library card, and the bamboo strip. Cows, said Annie, looking out the window. Jack looked out, too. The treehouse had landed in a lone tree in a sunny field. Cows grazed, and a young man stood watching over them. At the edge of the field was a farmhouse. Beyond the house was a walled city. It looked so peaceful, peaceful, said Annie. You can never be sure, said Jack. Remember Pompeii looked peaceful before the volcano went off. Oh, yeah, said Annie. Let's see what the book says, said Jack. He reached into his sack and pulled out the China book. He opened it and read aloud. Over 2,000 years ago, China was ruled by its first emperor. Because he chose the dragon to be his symbol, he was called the Dragon King. In China, dragons are seen as brave and powerful creatures. Dragon King? That sounds a little scary, said Jack. I like his outfit, said Annie. Next to the writing was a picture. It showed a man wearing a rich flowing robe with wide sleeves. He also wore a tall hat with beads hanging from it. Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote, First Emperor called Dragon King. The book, uh, the book we need must be in the Dragon King's library, said Annie. I bet his palace is in that city. Jack looked up. Right, he said, and that's, how to, and that's how to get there. He pointed across the field to a dirt road that led to the walled city. Good plan, said Annie. She climbed out of the treehouse and started down the rope ladder. Jack threw the china book and his notebook into his sack. He slung the sack over his shoulder and followed Annie. When they reached the ground, they started through the field. Look, that guy's waving at us, said Annie. The man tending the cows was shouting and waving. He started running toward them. Uh-oh, what's he want, said Jack. A moment later, the man stood in their path. He was young and handsome with a kind face. Can you do me a great favor, he asked. I would be most grateful. Of course, said Annie. Give a message to the silk weaver. You will see her at the farmhouse, said the young man. Tell her to meet me here at twilight. Sure, no problem, said Annie. The young man smiled. Thank you, he said. Then he started to leave. Wait, excuse me, said Jack. Do you know where we can find the Imperial Library? A look of horror crossed the man's face. Why, he whispered. Oh, I, I just wondered, said Jack. The young man shook his head. Beware of the Dragon King, he said. Whatever you do, beware. Then he turned and ran back to his cows. Oh man, whispered Jack. Now we know one thing for sure. What, what, asked Annie. This place is not as peaceful as it seems, said Jack. Chapter three, the Silk Weaver, is tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed the first two chapters. Hope you come back to read the next two with us tomorrow. Stay safe, have a great day, have fun. Bye everybody.